everybody, it's Martin Fleck and Final Zone Game. Uh, today I'm tying a little set of crab for you. Nice little deer hair crab, chenille legs. Fairly, fairly straightforward tie. Um, certainly I like it as a good, as a good crab imitation. Um, I definitely, um, the more uh, the more I tie crabs with like the ultra chenille or the micro ultra chenille legs, that's, I think I think it looks more realistic than just uh, silly legs or rubber legs. So, in the hook, in the vice, sorry, I've got a size two uh, Gamma Katsu SL12, and I'm just going to tie on my lead dumbbells just above the point of the hook. Um, I've messed around putting my dumbbells in the middle with this, just trying to see how it affects the presentation and basically I've found that it doesn't really. Um, the crab still sink, sinks on an angle um, just because of the shape of it, as most crab patterns do. So it makes it much easier uh, to tie if you have your eyes at the at the back at the way. So figure eight them on nice and tight. Not that tight the move. Just get them lashed on. Doesn't really matter what thread you use. I'm just using white because I'm tying a quite a pale tan coloured crab. Then I'll get some super glue. And amongst that, just to tighten things up. And make sure nothing's moving. So Next is um, the eyes. I'm just tying in, I'm just using, these are just the EP eyes. Um, and medium. It's just sort of sparkly ones, are quite nice. And I want to give it a, just do a couple of loose wraps to hold it. Then another, the opposite direction. Then a couple of loose wraps. Then you can sort of even them up. So they're about the same distance from the tie in point. Lash them down a wee bit, fold them out, and just to see, it's a bit short. Spend a couple of seconds just to get them uh, nice and level. It's, it's, it, it, it looks much better if your crab eyes are the same length. And then to post them, make them stand out from the body, I take wraps. Between the hook right, and the stem of the eye, and that gradually pulls the eyes in. You can see there they're coming up, and it's up to you how um, it's up to you how far. You want to bring them together. And then when you're happy, you can sort of secure it. And then just come in. 
some away the waste pieces. I quite like to keep these for uh, weed guards, so really, it's really good stuff, nylon. And they're just nice wee short convenient pieces, I just throw them in a tub. You can just pick them out. Saves any um, hassle, cutting stuff and all that. So I've got three lengths of uh, ultra chenille tan, and I've just singed the ends with a lighter just to put a slight taper in them. You don't really need to do that if you know why. And then I've just got to fold them over the thread, catch them in, so that it's right in the middle. And then I'll just fold them in, uh, tie them in. Sorry on. And the hook gape side, sort of, um, you know, on the opposite side from the eyes, so you end up with something like this. And then a pair of claws, also made of chenille. Line them up, fold them over the thread. Bring them down on your side. Get them tied in. Don't worry too much about how they're sitting at this stage because um, once we put the deer hair and stuff on, uh, they'll move around. And then I always use some UV resin to set the belly anyway, just to sort of hold them in position. Um, I like the original fiddlesticks crab was is just one bunch of deer hair, but I prefer two. I think it gives you a bit. It lets you achieve like a flatter profile, um, and still have coverage. But it's up to yourself. Um, if you if you want just a single bunch, you just tie it in and and go with that. But. I'm going to use two. So, first bunch, just a loose turn, just drop your bobbin over it. Minimal tension. Right. And then another. Right, so you've got two loose wraps. And then put your thumb in here, right? This will sort of help, help to stop it, um, Spinning, it still try. It still tries to come a wee bit, but you can sort of hold your thumb flat, push it. You're basically trying to stack the hair on top of the shank. Now you'll never manage to keep all of it above. Well, you might. You know, you, you always have to get back and push it a wee bit because it just always tries to follow the thread. The thread just pulls it. But don't worry about it. Just as long as you can get most of it, you know, I mean, that's fairly clean, good enough. If you just tie a single bunch straight in the, like, directly in the middle, it's, it's easier to keep everything above. And this is just natural deer hair, I'm using quite, quite big bunches. Same again, a couple of loose wraps. Put it tight. You can see that the legs have went all over this place, but don't worry. Don't worry about that if you find that happening. And just run the thread through the hair a couple of times just to hold everything in place. Make sure make sure it's not going to come out on you. And then bring your thread to the front. 
That's for when I won't finish. So, you've now got a, just a ball of deer here with some chenille sticking out it. First thing I want to do is I'm going to really get in close to the any of this here that's crept round, right? And this is no, you're not stacking a nice bass bug, so it doesn't really matter about keeping it tidy. But you do want to have this nice and tight. You don't want any buoyancy in the underside. And then just come in, nice straight cut across the top. So that's the be very careful of your chenille. Just sort of trim it to a wee crab shape. I like to use my eyes as a, the eyes as a sort of guide. I nearly took a leg off there, need to be careful. You do need to be careful of your legs. Just keep moving them. Make sure everything's out of your way. It needs to be. It doesn't need to be perfect, you know. Just, just close. Close enough, a wee round shape, you know. And crabs are a bit mental anyway when you look at them, um, shape wise. We've got all bits sticking at them, and, and yeah, the ones that have lost a leg. Or, And then, once you've got everything nice and trimmed, <laughs> the fly is basically done. Um, just in order to finish it. It's good if you can. I mean, you don't. Need, you don't really need to. You can just sort of position it like that and leave it if you want. But I like to get some uh, UV resin and just sort of position the legs and sort of hold them in place a wee bit and coat the belly for durability. So, just take my loon, th my loon thick, and. Get it in here like this. On the belly there. I just do one side at a time, it's easier to hold. Um, that's good. Same with this side, coat up those eyes, make sure the thread wraps are covered. <coughs> Excuse me. Display the legs.
And there you have it, the fiddle stretch crab is finished. I've turned that a bit unevenly, but that will do. That will do for me. Um, that's it. The trimming takes a bit of time, but it's a nice wee crab imitation. And you can use it for I mean, any, anything that eats a crab. Redfish, drum, bass, sea bass, you know. Uh, bream, you could tie them small, tie them down to a four. Or smaller for bream. Tie them big, throw them a permit. Anything really, bonefish. So, I hope that was useful. Uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below if you enjoyed it. And um, remember to subscribe for more HD videos. Leave any comments below that you like. Uh, tell me what kind of flies you would like me to tie. And I'll try to tie them for you. Thanks very much guys. Bye.